Hi there, this is TuxOcher.com again and in the past I did a couple of articles on so-called Tether software and today I want to show you another one which is called Digicom Control. Digicom Control is open source software and for Windows only. We just started what I have installed here is version 1.2 beta version. Okay, he started with the grid. All these pictures you see here I did while playing around with this software. Like usual you can change the parameters for the capture on here like changing the F number or ISO or white balance or so on. You can define where to save the images. I set it here to save to the laptop. You can save it to the camera or a combination of both. I connected a Canon 7D and if you take a look on the compatibility list on the home page. It doesn't look that good with Canon brand cameras. The Nikon models uh, seem to be, be a little bit more supported, but we give it a try. Okay, first of all you have here a function to download the pictures. Here you have a function to exposure bracketing. For example, if you want to, want to make the base pictures for an HDR, but I won't show that here in the video. Then you have here a function for time lapse. It's kept pretty simple, I think. You just have to choose the seconds between the shots the number of shots and the right frame rate for the later video. If you take like for example a hundred pictures, oops, a little bit too much, but he right away calculates the time of the time lapse will go and the length of the later video. What is pretty interesting is that Digicam Control is able to connect to a DSLR dashboard server that is normally a modified TP-Link wireless router so you can connect from the laptop to the wireless connected camera. Okay, now start getting into the live view mode. You just heard the click. Make it a little bigger. Okay. Here the green rectangle is, of course, where you focus. I just put it over here and say focus. That's it. And then you have the different focus stacking modes. There is a simple mode and there is an advanced mode. I just can't figure out the difference between those and if you watch here, if I use the advanced mode and for example I want to take 10 pictures okay 10 and as soon as I start to change the focus tab that is a little bit experienced like with the most of these software types he switched the number of phot photos back to the default one. So the advanced mode is actually not usable at the moment. But we go to the simple mode. Here you can again choose the number of pictures you want to take. Okay. And if I focus back here on the closest flower. Okay, done. And you can choose here the stepping rate of the autofocus motor in the lens. That 
is a little bit of experience and you can choose if the focus is going from far to near or what we here will do is near to far. I won't actually start the sequence here but I want to show you a different thing. From here you can change the camera settings also like changing the aperture for example. Let's go to uh, example 8 and there you see a bug here in the status line that the software isn't able to change the value but this bug occurs also if you change the ISO mode or other settings but as far as I could figure out it's only in the live view mode of this program. Another pretty interesting thing is the so-called motion detection. I already selected it which means if there is a motion detected within the picture the camera will automatically trigger. I shall try to simulate that. Okay, it didn't work. Oh, forgot that button, sorry. You heard he took the picture. So you can use that if you want to detect this feature. If we go back to the grid. Oh, that is using a better software. We we'll just close the program. Okay, and start it again. Sorry for that one. But if we slide here to the last picture. Ah. You can see here that he took a capture with the auto mode. Okay. We go back to live view. Of course, you have the uh, standard functions like using the 5 or 10 times enlargement and you have the buttons here in this control to focus, adjust right on the point. Okay, we close the live view. Okay, uh, Digicam uh, control offers a couple of tools. One which is to create a movie right away from a time-lapse sequence. But I doubt if you take, for example, another open software like Virtual Dub, if this is necessary in a tether shooting program. It also uses the public XVID format for generating video files. Digicam Control offers a couple of other tools like PhD, which is obviously for astronomical photography, but I'm not fit in this genre of photography. So this was my little introduction to Digicam Control. As I said, it's beta software, so some of the little bugs I showed are quite normal. I hope the developer will fix them within the next release. Right now I would not advise to use Digicam Control or DSLR Dashboard, the other alternative, but as a user if you don't want to pay for a program you just can wait for the further development. Right now, the both programs, if I compare them, are not stable enough, enough to do real productions with it, but the way is very interesting. So that is what I wanted to show you about Digicam Control. I hope you like this little video, and if you have any questions 
or suggestion just place them into the comments till the next time ciao tux auch. Thank you.